Hi, I'm Steve Greswell, back here doing a sound foley for you. As you can see, we've got a file in now with absolutely no sound. This was given to me, uh, some old footage which I've enhanced, and we're ready now to put the sound on it. First thing you do is export it as um, a reference file, QuickTime reference file. Go into Options and untick the audio tracks, because obviously you don't want two dummy audio tracks going out. Save it. I'm saving it to the desktop. Now I've got two files here. One's the original and the other ones I've compressed for your purposes so you can actually see it in Camtasia. Because Camtasia doesn't really like um, high quality files when you're uh, trying to record and demonstrate what's going on. Right, Sonic Fire Pro 5. How do you import the audios? Uh, first thing we need to do is put the video in. So here we are. Open the video and it drops into the video track. There you go. No sound as yet. I mean, I've cheated, I've put a lot of sound parts already in there, um, but uh, I'll go th through the process. First thing you do is um, go to audio, um, import, and it will open your import window. Now obviously, this is a little bit tricky the first time, uh, and obviously it varies from editor to editor, but on uh, Sonic Fire Pro, um, you have to go to the C drive. Here we go, C drive. Uh, next thing you need documents and settings, all users, application data, smart sound software inc. And now I've got loads and loads and loads of files in there. Obviously I've imported loads of files that I own. Obviously you'll have to do the same. You'll have to buy your own and import them. It comes with quite a few, but obviously the more you've got, the better it is for doing sound folies. Now the easy way you do it, you just add it all into the bin. If you don't want it, you hit the minus button and it takes it back out. Now one of the things I've have found is that when you're editing, the razor only cuts behind the file, it doesn't cut in front of the file. If you try and cut in front of the file, it doubles it up, so I don't know really what that's about. Obviously that's a glitch in the software. Obviously you have to lift one up. The other thing is, when you try and scrub, it doesn't scrub, it doesn't play the audio back when you roll the cursor across it. So again, that's just one of those things. You have to drop it in and press play and keep nudging it backwards and forwards until it works. Again, I don't know whether this is something they're going to address or not, but I mean, it's just a minute glitch which you can uh, get around, you can work around quite easily. Just to prove that I've got audio in there. There you go, and uh, we'll give you some more of that later on. Now obviously you have to mix the sounds. You can put lots of sounds in there. How you do that, there's a wave volume drop down button, and it's the usual, you put um, a mark point on there and then drop the volume down. And away you go. There's no right or wrong way of mixing things. That's entirely up to you at the end of the day. You know what you want it to sound like. Then you go to export soundtracks and it will export all of them. Uh, allows you how you want to export it doesn't matter if you've got 44.1 48k it will mix it to whatever sound that you want to here we go sound for pickle scott this is the name of the film i'm doing and it saves it i'm saving it actually to the desktop again it's just easier when you're demonstrating how to do things if the files are easy accessible but i would advise put it on your external drive and then you don't have any real major problems with sound lagging at all Here we go, that's the file exported. Back into Media Composer. Uh, file import. Look for your file on the desktop. It's in here somewhere. And there we go. Sound for Pickle Scott. Open. And it drops it into your bin here. Double click to drop it into the editing window. And then make sure you've got your audio tracks on. But you disarm your video track, otherwise it'll drop it in front of it. Hit it, and there you go. There's the audio track gone in. Now I've left a bit of an overrun at the end because then that allows me to fade how I want rather than the system fading how I want and if I want to extend it I can a bit. What I'm going to do, I intend to put the whole um, film up so that you can see exactly what I did. Have a look, it'll give you an idea of how to put things together. Obviously what you can do if you want to be really, really precise and you've got the resources to do it, then record the files yourself. So if you want a gunshot, record a gunshot. If you want somebody hammering in a piece of wood, then hammer in a piece of wood. There's nothing to stop you. It's your imagination that'll stop you on sound failures. Anyway, I hope this has been useful for you. If you have any problems, email me 
at my usual address and take care and I hope you have lots of fun with it.